back at State Farm Arena where the Boston Celtics fell to the Atlanta Hawks 130-122 in Game 3 of their Best of 7 series. I am Joseph Pavone. He is Bobby Manning. And Bobby, you got a chance to catch up with uh, Grant Williams right after Game 3. And here's uh, what Grant had to say. Did you kind of hear from Joe before Game 1, Game 2 that you might not be part of the rotation for those games? No, I didn't. But um, something that, you know, you don't expect to hear. You know, you're just a player in a situation. You don't try and coach. You just try your best to um, focus on what you can control. And that first game when I didn't play, just try to keep, keep the same attitude I would if I was, you know. Just try to uh, cheer on the teammates, um, bring energy. And same with game two. And then um, tonight was just, I don't know. Like, I don't know what decided for him to make me go in. And so I went in and tried to play well. And um, frustrating that we lose lost that. CLNS Media Celtics coverage is brought to you by FanDuel. Sign up at fanduel.com slash Boston and make every moment more on America's number one sports book. So Grant Williams talking about Joe Mazzulla going into the series, didn't mention anything about playing time. Didn't say that he was out of the rotation, which kind of surprises me. But then again, it doesn't because if this was, if the narrative was Grant's been in the rotation all 82 games or close to 82 games throughout the course of the regular season, then that's news, right? Then it's like, well, how good is your relationship with Joe Mazzulla? Mazzulla's just going to bench you without any explanation. But that clearly wasn't the case, right? I mean, Grant was already fighting to stay in that rotation those last few weeks of the regular season. Yeah, and I saw Grant before game one, the surprise benching in that one. Right. We debated going into the series, would there be more or less than one and a half benchings per game? DMPs. Yeah, the over-under. Grant. That's and right. They, yeah. they hit it through two games, the over. Two games, zero minutes. Not even the garbage time in right. game two, he got out there. So you wondered where he was at. Didn't look thrilled before game one to me. Game two came around, I asked Joe Mazzola, whether you could get in there, and Joe at that point said, I feel good about the guys we have, the rotation we have to beat Atlanta. So, surprised me to see him out there in the first quarter pretty quickly tonight. Foul trouble plays a role in that. I think Joe admitted that after the game. Uh, but it also surprised him. Yeah. You understand that tonight, but as you heard there, there wasn't the communication over him sitting in game one and two, which confuses me and goes back to this debate we've had on the show all year. Is Grant one of their core guys? It doesn't seem like they view him that way if they're not going to be communicating this or if they're just not going to be playing him at all in right. the playoff game. And I never felt that way going into the postseason. I never felt like, oh, they have to play Grant. I just felt like, what, what, where would they pick their spots? You know, I, I didn't see him as a shoe in but I thought maybe this would be a, a great opportunity for him to sort of start showing or proving himself to Joe Mazzulla that he can rely on him in the postseason. And he did that tonight. He did that tonight. Knocked down tough shots. I love the sidestep after Tatum found him on the wing. Right. Didn't do any of that up faking, attacking closeout moves that I think frustrate the staff throughout the season. And had a super effective game. I thought he got a nice charge call on Okongu Yeah, that was point. big. I mean, those are the type of plays that are going to get him playing time. And I got to be honest, I mean, I said this on, the, on our post-game show, because of what happened in Game 3, I think he's opened the door to me a little bit. Not, a, not a, The door's not wide open, but he certainly opened it for, for playing time in Game 4. At this point, I'd, I'd be frustrated if he didn't play. I didn't like that they paged him entirely in Game 4 and 2. I understand this year he's probably not a 27-minute-per-game guy anymore. Yeah. Tonight, there might have been even more opportunities for him to play down the stretch. Now, I love Horford switching on the young. Grant can do that to some degree, too, and then you can maybe hide Horford on a wing or Rob. Tonight, I think that got tricky because the Hawks hid their wings out there. But right now, you're looking at a guy who can help you switch more, which it looks like you need to do in this series, who can help you hit 21 threes. I mean, four is a big percentage of that. And make the right decisions and help you box up some more. I think Grant can do all of those things. So does it need to be 27? No. But in a series where it looks like Hauser's not going to be a as shoo-in. much of a shoe-in at this point, yeah. shift those minutes over to Grant. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. I just think he had to prove himself. And he did that. He did that in Game 3. Um, but one that was one reason I was surprised uh, to hear Grant say that. Well, the other part of it is just his overall vibe and 
game one. I don't know. It's just he seems sort of disconnected with the, for the, the team. He said and I felt like interesting tonight. He and was, I felt like in game two we saw the opposite. He was on his feet. He was cheering for guys. And clearly he didn't get playing time. So that there was no correlation there. But I just felt like there was a difference between game one and game two. Maybe he did something in practice. Maybe he just continued to show Joe Mazzulla and his coaching staff that he's that he's all about winning or whatever it takes for the team. And maybe that's what resonates most for Joe Mazzulla. When he, when he didn't like what happened on one play, he didn't get into the referee's face, he didn't complain, he went back and he, and he got back on defense. Maybe this, these are the little pieces uh, 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 of what uh, Grant Williams needs to do to convince Joe Mazzulla that, okay, I can trust you, okay? If I need you to make a play and it's late, late in the fourth quarter, I'm not gonna put you out there and be worried that you're gonna get into a referee's face or lose focus, you know? I think that's part of it as, as well. Absolutely, and you made the point on the show, did this help set up? his game three, the, the big two game. benchings. Yeah. It's tough to tell, it's all hypothetical, but it's possible. Right. And now I think you point forward into the future and say, all right, do this again. I'm gonna trust you and see how it goes. It wouldn't make any sense to me to put him back on the bench next game for a full game. I don't think that ever made sense to me. Because, because if you're great, it's like, what do I have to do to get back into, into your good graces? And he did yeah. say something interesting tonight. I don't want my situation to affect the team, which mm. points what you were saying about uh, him carrying that upbeat attitude going forward, but also him acknowledging, I'm in this weird spot, I'm in this tough spot, right. and I don't really understand it, and uh, it's frustrating, it's tough, and it's it's difficult right now for me personally, and I don't want that to spread to the rest of the team. Fortunately, I don't think the rest of the team really seems to care all that much. I mean, they're right. just going on doing their jobs. But Grant can help them, and I think deep down, as much as these guys, and I'd be interested to hear this from them, maybe tomorrow at practice, I'd have to guess they think they need Grant. If you ask them, like especially Tatum, who gives Grant more crap than anyone else. Yeah, it's like in a brotherly way, though. But yeah, they I think, know what he's capable of. I they think they're low-key cheering for him. Right? Yeah. And, and then it's like, man, if, if he does well and, and we win, then that's a I've, perfect I've situation. Said that's I idea. think they need him to win a championship. Do I think, think they, they need, Grant? need Grant to be Grant. And I'll ask if you wanted that. But he was part of that run last year. He was, he was. But that's the thing, though. It's just, it, it's the way things have changed compared to last year. It, it's none of this surprised me because Grant is just, he's just fallen. He's, he really has. And I'm not saying he's, it's, uh, it's going to be like that forever. He could get out of that in this postseason. But I, I'm not quite sure it happens right away. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll see. We'll see what Joe Mazzulla does, uh, how the Celtics approach game four against the Atlanta Hawks. And uh, we will be here uh, continuing to give you that uh, coverage, of course. Uh, so we got Bobby Manning heading to Atlanta practice. I'll be checking out the Celtics, uh, you know, the day, the, their off day. And of course, game four will be here back at uh, State Farm Arena, uh, game four between the Celtics and the Hawks. So stay tuned for plenty of coverage. He is Bobby Manning. I am Joe Sweet Pavone. Follow us, of course, on all social media platforms at CLNS Media and on CLNSmedia.com. The Boston Celtics fall to the Atlanta Hawks in Game 3 of their Best of 7 Series, 130-122. to 122. For Bobby Manning, I am Joe Sweet Pavone. We'll see you guys next time. The Guard Report is brought to you by BetterHelp. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Garden today to get 10% off your first month. This edition of The Guard Report is also brought to you by Athletic Greens. Visit AthleticGreens.com slash Garden for a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase.